Let's get on with the details of those stories now. Ghana will join the rest of the world in marking World AIDS Day on December 1. Now, that's just about three weeks away. Now, ahead of that, the country is facing what could be described as crisis situation. The country is currently battling with a 70% increase in new HIV infections, dealing with a significant blow to government efforts at ending the epidemic by the year 2030. Director General of the Ghana AIDS Commission, Steve Treme Etuahene, gives the details at a news conference in Accra last week. Young people are getting infected. Um, between 2010 and 2016, new infections among young people age 24 and younger new infections increased among this group by 45 percent young people take a lot of risks that expose them to hiv infection but they do not protect themselves and here protection is use of condoms during high-risk sex. What we are considering, the governing board of Ghana AIDS Commission has taxed a committee to evaluate the situation in terms of introducing another policy, which is quite similar, pre-exposure prophylaxis, uh, for especially uh, key affected populations like female sex workers and MSM. We know that these are the core groups that, that actually um, who serve as source of the, of the uh, infection. So that's the Director General of the Ghana AIDS Commission, Steve Chirme, uh, uh, Tuahene, there. I'll be talking to him later on in the show. But this afternoon, I visited the uh, a testing centre here in Accra at the Adabraka Polyclinic. I just tested for my HIV uh, status this afternoon. Watch this. Just finished testing for my HIV status here at the Adabaka Polyclinic. Now, since the 1930s, the world has been battling with an unknown virus, HIV. It's been almost 90 years, and we're still figuring out a lasting solution. Well, just when we thought we had come a long way here in Ghana, the National AIDS Control Program is saying that HIV prevalence has shot up from about 12,000 in 2015 to over 20,000 in 2016. Now that's where you pause to re-examine your lifestyle. Testing, they say, is one of the surest way to be sure and to save yourself from contracting HIV. But here at the polyclinic, these empty seats says it all. The report is the true reflection. Monthly, we give out reports of those who come to test and those who are found to be reactive. And this is the true reflection of the report that is given by the AIDS Commission. So what does it mean? Does Mostly it mean? people come here to test, but monthly we see that the, those who are tested, the positive ones at times are high. We get positive clients. Okay. Yeah. Why do you think, you've been a nurse I'm sure for a very long time. Yes. Why yes. do you think the number or the prevalence just keeps rising despite all the efforts that we're putting in? Good. There are so many factors. One, people fear to come and test because they don't even want to know their status. They don't want to be frightened. They think if they are ignorant and they die with it, they like it that way. Second, they don't even believe that it is a, a germ theory or it's a virus. Mm. Some related to spiritism. I understand that people are not wearing condoms a lot these days. Is that true? Yes, it is true. The people want to enjoy. They used to say flesh to flesh. But then if we educate them to know why they should use it, I think they will do that. But the sex workers, they are rather using the condoms. Most of them, they come here, take the condoms. We even teach them how to use it consistently and then the correct use of the condom. My message is HIV is real. But because of the stigma, people are trying to dodge it. But it's better for you to know your status, roll into the ART uh, management or treatment 
rather than waiting till you get to the A stage, or which is the dying stage, because all opportunistic infections will visit you. So we want to break that chain. So what? I advise or I educate everybody to come on board. Just come and know your status, then you take it from there. Opportunistic infections, she says, breaking the chain. That's what this is all about. And we're going to have a very detailed discussion about this. And hopefully you take a cue and get your own uh, status, get to know your own status or re-examine your lifestyle. But let me take you through some fact sheets that I have here. And it's coming from the UNAs. Now, mind you, the UNAs has been in Ghana checking on the statistics of people living with HIV here in Ghana. And they've put together this report. Here is the fact sheet. And then I'll tell you about, I'll tell you about uh, the result as they put together. Now, if you take adults and children living with HIV here in Ghana, we're looking at 310 people. That's adults and children. 310,000, I beg your pardon, 310,000 people are living with HIV and AIDS. And this is just 2017, as of 2017. Now they go further and they break that down. So if you look here, they say adults age 15 and over living with HIV. So they're beginning from persons who are uh, 15 years and above, which means that anybody be beneath the age of 15 was not captured. So here, we're looking at 280,000 people. 280,000 people, that's a lot of people. And you never know who is around you, who is with you, who you're planning to sleep with, who you have already slept with. Now let me go forward and, uh, and, and tell you a bit more. Now, if they break it down further, they're looking, they put it on the gender scale. Women aged 15 and over living with HIV, we're looking at a figure of 190 thousand women living with HIV 15 years and over 190,000 what about men now men age 15 and over living with HIV in Ghana as of 2017 according to the UNAs here is 28,000 28, 000, 28 uh, no well that's 95,000 actually 95,000 and if we move away from women and children uh, women and men and you get to children, children aged from 0 to 14 living with HIV amount to 28,000, 28,000. Now, if you look at adults aged 15 to 49, which means that anybody who is beyond 49 is not captured in this bracket. Now, adults aged 15 to 49 uh, HIV prevalence rate is 1.7%. And I'll have the expert explain this to us a bit later. But let me just take you a bit down and look at the result of the work that the UNAs came to do here in Ghana. They put together uh, a little bit of a summary here. Now, these are the challenges that they're pointing out, the challenges that Ghana has had to deal with fighting HIV and AIDS. They say that the key challenges faced by the joint team in Ghana in 2016 included the following, and I go through them. It says, one, a decline in the number of HIV prevention interventions uh, towards the general population. And in my stand-up, I did indicate that just when we thought, or just when Ghana thought that we'd come a long way in the fight against HIV, we're getting this report that over 70, we're recording over 70% prevalence rate. Now, this could be one of the reasons why, and this is put together by UNAs, that, that there has been a, uh, uh, a decline in the number of HIV prevention interventions. We do have the Ghana AIDS Commission head here in the studio later on. He'll explain to us why uh, we seem to have let our guard down because the moment we did that, we're seeing a surge in the prevalence rates. Now, two, low funding levels of civil society organizations as well as community-based organizations weakening their capacity to generate demand for services towards the achievement of the 90s targets at community level. Now, the 90s targets, at the time when this pre the prevalence was really high, there were a lot of efforts channeled towards reducing or, or eliminating uh, the, the infection. But it appears that the same efforts done or put in in the 90s uh, seem to have changed. Now, if I go forward, it says that 
another point or another point that they realize is that there's a weak supply chain system that leads to frequent stock out of test kits and drugs. Now this afternoon when I went to the Adabraka Polyclinic, it was really easy. I went through the process, there was a little pinch, you know, a little bit of blood. They took it, they put it in the kit, and then they were able to tell me after about between 10 to 15 minutes, they were able to tell me uh, my status. They tell me, by the way, that that was not the entire uh, test, but it indicates that you were negative and that they, you, could, you could be let go. If it is re reactionary, they call it, then you'll have to take another set of tests. So they're saying, the UNS is, UNAs is saying that there was a weak supply chain system that led to frequent stock out of those test kits, which I used this afternoon, as well as the drugs that are needed for the HIV elimination intervention. Again, they're saying that there is stigma in healthcare settings and it is a major barrier to care, especially for key populations. What they're saying is that the Ghana Demographic and Health uh, Survey further elaborates that levels of stigma in the country have been on the rise. So even though we've spoken about this over and over and over again, people are still stigmatized. People living with HIV, and I do have one of them in the studio uh, later on for this discussion, people are still stigmatized, and that is a major challenge uh, for that in the intervention to end the HIV. Now, the 2014 GDHS showed that the percentage of adults with accepting attitudes towards people living with HIV decreased from 19% in 2008 to 14% for males and from 11% to 8% for females. So it appears that uh, females are more, we, we, we tend to be more uh, judgmental, if you like, towards people who are living with HIV and AIDS. So even though it looked like it was better, you know, we could, we could uh, accept people for who they are, for their statuses, etc., and not judge them. From 19% in 2008, we've gone all the way down to 14%, and that is for males, for females. From 11%, we've gone all the way down to 8%. There's more that the UN AIDS asks, and I'm going to wrap this up quickly. First of all, they say again that there is slow implementation of the task, uh, of the task shifting guidelines and treat all policy, which has recently been initiated in four priority regions. They also go on to say that multi-sectoral multi monitoring is not evident and GAC's monitoring activities are mainly focused on its implementing partners. The only visible sectoral monitor monitoring of HIV activities takes place in the, I beg your pardon, in the health sector. Obviously, the UNA is saying this is not enough. This is not enough and that we should do a bit more about this. They also say that there is limited physical and laboratory infrastructure to support rapid scale-up of health services delivery. And then there is limited data on retention of patients on treatment, mainly due to lack of a unique identification system. That is certainly a nationwide conversation that has been had over and over and over again. And this is a report put together by the UNAs, and this is as of 2017, which is the very latest. Like I said, we have all the experts in the studio will be having this conversation. But the Ghana AIDS Commission is saying that majority of those caught up in this crisis that we're talking about are the youth. So we went out to meet them. We've been asking them how they practice sex. If they put on the uh, condom, they don't enjoy it. And then that's definitely the one raw. You know, when I talk about raw, you know, you understand, yes. And then when even when they put on the condom and during um, them having the sex, uh, it's either a bust or they don't enjoy, so they take it off. Well, you enjoy, but if you put it on, you, you, you enjoy it that way, then using protection. Yes, and then for them not to contract the A's, it depends on who you have it with. You don't have to go about sleeping with many men, you know. You'd have to be careful. If I think this problem has to do with the ladies, okay? You know, when a lady is with you in a bed, and then that particular moment when you want to get into her, and then when you stop she's going to change her whole mood. So you just want to do it 
do it straight so up. In the heat of the moment, you just want to do it. Yeah, in the heat of the moment, you just want to do it before she changes her mind. Like when you get um, a woman for the first time, like you're in a hurry to, yeah. So he doesn't care if she she sexually trans she has sexual transmitted disease. It's a good feeling, eh? Yeah, yeah. So he's just interested in what he's going to do. Yeah. Some people feel like they can't wait. Maybe when when they are caught up. I mean, in the heat of the moment. Yes, in the heat of the moment, they feel they can't wait. They just want to get off or something. Yeah. So that's it. So let's have a conversation on this. You've heard all that, all that they had to say um, in the heat of the moment and everything. I don't know, but your health is paramount and you need to keep it safe. Well, the Director General of the Ghana AIDS Commission, Steve Tremi Etiahine, is here with me in the studio. Sir, you're welcome and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Also here in the studio with us is Reverend John Azuma, a Minister of the Word of God and an HIV Ambassador. You're also welcome, sir. Thank you, madam. So I am wondering, and I don't know if you have said this anywhere, what your impressions are. 70.15% increase in the prevalence uh, rate. That's what we're reporting. W what are your initial reactions to this? OK, before I answer that question, uh, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate you <laughs> for taking the <laughs> HIV test. Yeah. Not many people would do that. And in fact, this is something we would encourage uh, right. all the media houses to do. Yeah. That everybody should go take a, oh, an yes. HIV test? Yes. yes. If, yes. If, if they want to, because we don't force anybody to do it. Right. We offer it. And I think you have demonstrated that it can be done. Right. And everybody sees you, I mean, sees you smiling, which means it's not as fearful or dreadful as people think. But if you don't test positive. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Not if, exactly. No, but no. if you don't test positive, no, isn't no, it? No, see, <laughs> okay. no. Okay. Is, is of course, then we have to have another session so that we can de, you know, uh, sensitize you about That's okay. this position. Right. Um, Thank you for giving us the opportunity to answer questions on the 70.15%. Um, as you know, uh, it's, it's a calculation based on 2015 and 2016 uh, estimate data. Now, the data I just went through from yes, the UNH? Yes. Okay. And actually, it is Ghana's Commission and its partners, including uh, National AIDS Control Program, that prepares this report. So okay. we, we prepared this report here in mm. Ghana uh, mm. with, with support from the UNAs. Now, you say that it was, uh, that free data was given by the program manager of National AIDS Control Program. And I know that he wouldn't say that HIV uh, uh, new infections went up between 2015 and 2016 by 70.15% 70, 70 because 12 months, it's just a, a too short a time to reflect the true situation of the epidemic. And so we normally will not put it that way. Why? Because you can use the example of 2016 and 2017. So what I so get, help me if I'm wrong, what I get from what you're saying is that the statistics are not correct? No. Okay. No, it must not be interpreted the way it was. Okay. Okay. How should it because be interpreted? So, so if you want to see trends in the epidemic, you want to see, if you want to be sure that there is increase or decrease in the epidemic, give yourself three, cons three or more consecutive years. And then when you see the tr trend in that direction, then you can say for sure there is uh, an increase or decrease. So I will use the example of 2016 and 2017. 2016, it was 20,000, mm -hmm. more than 20,000. Uh -huh. 2017, it was 19,100. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if you if if you want to say that in 2017 HIV decreased between 2016 and 2017, HIV new infections decreased, then it's quite misleading because it's not 
a true I mean it cannot be the true reflection okay. of of okay. the epidemic. Mr. Chani, the yes. point here is that is the prevalence going up, stabilizing or decreasing? Yes, so you should see the trend over over a period of time, more than one year or two years. And what we put out there, which has been in the public domain mm -hmm. uh, since as far back as May this year, yeah. when the, in the speech read on his behalf, of uh, the president's behalf, it was mentioned that uh, new infections had gone up over a period of six years mm -hmm. by 45 percent among young people and 25 percent across all ages. This is already in the public domain. The fact and that it has gone up itself, isn't it problematic? Don't you find that problematic, it, especially based on the efforts we've been putting uh, into this fight? Yes, it is problematic. But when, when you use just two data points over uh, data of uh, derived from two data points over just a period of 12 months, it becomes worrying because this figure is very high and people are calling to say, oh, um, we are all afraid, we are But shouldn't we, f shouldn't we face this reality of it so we begin to take the necessary steps yes, but what towards we, dealing with what it? What we are saying is that let's present the data, you know, uh, and reflect the true meaning of the situation. Okay. This one what? doesn't. Okay, which is why you are here, by yes. the way, uh, to help us understand. But let me come to, to, to you, Reverend yeah. Azuma. You've heard what Mr. Mr. Uh, uh, Etiahine has just said. Yeah. What for you is a problem? Do you think that part of the problem has been our inability to accept the reality of the figures we're dealing with and just work towards it? Or do you think that maybe we are just all being just alarmist about the, the prevalence rate? Hmm, yeah, thank you. Uh, to, to my side, mm -hmm. or the side of the people living with HIV, yeah. what we know is that prevalence keep, keep going up. Keep, keep going up. Despite all the efforts. Yes, despite all the effort. But you see, it's a big worry to us because uh, it's like a train going. There's more people in the train. We don't want more people to join. Mm -hmm. Because when, when more people join, it becomes overcrowded. overcrowded. Getting the retroviral drugs is a problem. Stigma, the facility. So we mm -hmm. don't want more people to join the train. Mm -hmm. So that, but we are seeing that year in, year out, mm -hmm. more people are joining. Right. So for us, it's a worry. Okay. So the number going up is a big worry to us. And we are, we, we are working closely with government mm -hmm. To put in the effort okay. so that we can decrease the number because the more it go up it worries us so we are putting in this effort to decrease the number as yeah. you said yeah. and i can remember as far back as i was a child yeah since we, we've been tackling this y yes. uh, issue uh -huh. we're in 2018 we're mm. talking about the, the figures uh, going up yeah does it what do you think is a problem why why do you think we're facing this problem yeah the problem can be divided into sessions Yes, about three sessions. Okay. One, uh, in a way, uh, we people with HIV are one of the problems. Why? Yeah, because some complacency sets in. You are HIV, you are taking your drugs. And along the line, you stop the drug. Because it stabilizes your system. So your, then, you no, know, does it not? Either a pastor or a herbalist uh, tell you, I pray for you, therefore stop the medicine, which okay. is not true. And one thing about HIV is when you stop the medicine, what happened that the virus have the opportunity to grow. To come back. So the when you have sexual intercourse with another person who is negative, you have the chance to infect the person. Okay. So you see, so people living with HIV continue. They are to, part of the problem. Are part of the problem. And then next the, the problem next is, is government. Okay. Yeah, to us is government because the advocacy must continue. Mm -hmm. Along the line, advocacy drop. We, we no more come to TV, radio to talk about cheese. So Ghanaians think that, oh, it is not there again. So okay. the more you don't tell them the issue, the more you don't educate them, they will go back and do what you don't expect them to right. do. So government must provide the funds okay. so that we can continue doing the education. Okay. And because the funds are not coming, education is not going. Okay. This is where we Mr. are. Mr. Chahine said he will help us. But the third one, he said the problem is, is in three uh, yeah, sessions. So you're going to take me through it. One, one, you say your people living with HIV AIDS yeah. are part of it. Yeah. Secondly, you said advocacy dropped. Third is what? Yes, the community. The third okay. is the community, the pastors are there, the journalists are inside, 
the herbalists are there and the health facility is what there. What have we done? Yes, you are, you are doing very well. Today, uh, my, my director is congratulating you. I join my director to congratulate you mm -hmm. and urge other journalists to do so. But sometimes when people mount the platform like this, on, on front of the speaker, the technologies they use in the extra BHR, let's say in the local languages, when we are far back listening to the local language, I will use your, your multimedia Adome TV, Adome or Adome FM or Adome mm. TV. When they are talking about HIV, the technologies they use is Kodiwo Baba Sukramine. We, when, <laughs> when you see me in front of you, am I Baba Sukramine? Oh, I've not, I've not heard, uh, I've not heard any no, of my colleagues say Baba Sukramine no, for AIDS. This is on record. Okay. This is on record. Not, so, I'm not so the way it media. is described the in the media the, yeah, doesn't, the, help it doesn't help in the acceptance, all. which is why you believe the acceptance it's worse stigma. rate has gone Yeah, has it's worse stigma. stigma. So when one is HIV, he will never like to disclose it. Okay. Yes, from our side, we know what is happening. Okay. And when we are listening, and probably you are in a room with your children, and one time the media was, that we went to a program, and they captured it. And when they were showing it in the 6 o'clock news, mm -hmm. they went to bring the skeleton pictures. Okay. When we are far past that stage. So, 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 so people like the media, the pastors, everybody who is talking yes. about HIV should project the more right of a positive side. outlook yes. so that it will, it will not fuel uh, the stigma. I'll yes. come back to you, but Mr. Tohin, while I, I, I go on the phone, I'd like for you to think about this because I'll come back to you with it. The issue Can I correct something? So, yes, sir. Yes, thank you. The error I'm trying to correct. Okay, is it is in the statistics? Yes. Okay, hold on, because I have somebody on the phone I'd like to engage. Okay. Since he's on the phone and he's not here in person, and I'll engage him and I'll come back to you. But I want you to think of this for me. The advocacy, the fact that advoc advocacy has gone down, because it's a point that he, uh, Reverend Azuma here has made, and we saw it in the UNA, uh, uh, the reporters, for which he said uh, you, 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 you were part of putting uh, together. Uh, Gabriel Benaku uh, uh, joins me. He's a chairman of the Coalition of NGOs in Health. Seth, thank you very much for your time this afternoon here um, on the polls. Have you followed the latest statistics? Yes, good afternoon and good afternoon to your viewers and uh, your panelists and, and studio. Mm. I have. You have? Yes. I is this as alarming as some of us think it is, or as the, uh, um, the, the Director General of the AIDS Commission here th uh, says, we are not interpreting it properly? Thank you. It's technically, it's not alarming. Okay. But superficially, you will see that it's alarming. But technically, what it means is that Ghana is doing well in terms of promoting HIV and AIDS services. And therefore, people are demanding for services. So you will see that more people are getting tested. You will see that the figures are increasing. You will see that pressures are being put to the health facilities to receive quality of care of HIV and AIDS services. It means that civil society are putting government into uh, their respective positions to provide the needed services. It mm -hmm. means that Parliament, and for that matter, the Ministry of Health, is not proactive in supporting HIV funding. Those are the indicators for why these uh, results are coming. So, therefore, I'm in support of Reverend Azuma and the other panelists in saying that we need to sustain the effort we made from 2000 up to 2010. The effort we put in from 2000 to 2010 has misplaced. Oh, oh, what, what, what exactly do you think went wrong? I mean, it looked as if we were doing well. Uh, and and you, you are saying that it's not alarming. But maybe from a technical perspective, for those of you who are technical people in this field, I am not a technical person. It is alarming to me. Okay, so what do you think we, we, we were doing that we stopped doing and that we, we were, should go back to, we specifically? We were doing well in terms of uh, education, testing, and we are uh, developing our health and accommodating people who, have, who are HIV positive. We were supporting the support groups to have income generating interventions so that they can reduce multiple uh, reinfections. We were supporting uh, the stigma, anti-stigma activities. 
Now we are not. We are not funding any of this I'm talking about. We are, we are only doing spotted and pilots in different regions. Sometimes we focus on one region when the region is perceived to be the, the highest region in terms of HIV prevalence. Mm -hmm. We focus the, the next year, it moves to Eastern region, we go there. Okay. The next year, go to Volta region, we move there. The next year, I come to Brown Havre, then we focus there. That is a piecemeal approach. And that's why I'm saying that the effort we put from 2000 to 2010 has been misplaced. And therefore, we are not able to sustain and fund properly HIV care and support services in okay. the country. Hold on for me, sir. Uh, uh, let me just announce quickly that I also have Dr. Robert uh, Kuganablem, who is the deputy ranking uh, uh, on the Parliament's Health Committee and member of Parliament for Binduri in the Northern Region. Sir, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. I'll engage you pretty shortly. But I'll have Mr. Twainis here respond to what the point that uh, the coalition of NGOs has just raised. He, sa raised. he says the interventions since the 2000s have been misplaced. Do you agree? Um, before I answer that, let me just say that the error I'm trying to correct is not to suggest that the new, in, new infections going up is not a problem. It's okay. a terrible problem. Right. It is a terrible problem. But the magnitude that we, you know, uh, we're giving to it is what the, the concern is. Um, <clears throat> and so it is not 70.15%. Uh, that data did not come from official sources. Now, what, what is happening uh, in the country is that, um, yes, we, we have all the right policies and programs in place. Um, for, and here we are talking about new infections, not prevalence. Mm -hmm. Now, for countries that have reduced new infections, mm -hmm. four or five things you know, stand out right. so far as those countries are concerned. Number one is that there is um, uh, sustained and more strategic investment in HIV. Number two is that... At the, the moment? At the moment? Yes, yes, not in Ghana. I'm okay. just using the example of countries that have, you know, reduced new infections okay. to the barest minimum. Okay. One is sustained investment. Two is uh, the response focusing or based on the local epidemic. Three is political leadership. And four is community-based uh, interventions. In Ghana, we have all these four. So why is it that we are seeing uh, rising new infections? It's because we've not taken these to scale. Okay. What, what does that mean? What it means is that we need adequate inve investment okay, on a sustainable basis to really, uh, in all the areas of the uh, response, so we are looking at prevention, we are looking at uh, treatment, treatment and care, we are looking at uh, 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 mitigation of impact of the epidemic. Well, this is how I understand what you're okay. saying. So that, that organizations or agencies, for example, like the HIV, the, the AIDS Commission needs more money. Is that what you're saying? Partly that is, that is the issue, but not everything is about money. Because when you take uh, treatment, for example, we have money for all the drugs we need, okay. at least for the next three or four years. Okay. okay. So it means that if we, we have all the 300 and uh, 10, they are a little more, but 310,000 uh, PLHIV on treatment, mm -hmm. okay? Then we will see a difference. But here is the case, we have just around 100,000. And it, what the data suggests is that... So we have only about 100,000 on treatment at yes, the moment? No. Yes. Because we cannot afford the treatment? No, the people are not coming. When right. they are tested uh, positive, Mm -hmm. As Osofo said, some are in denial. Okay. Others too would want, you know, a permanent solution, which is cure. Mm -hmm. So a cure is cure is promised by a pastor or prophet or herbalist. Then they will go. They will there. go for it. So we are seeing healing, uh, shopping, you know, among people living with HIV. Okay. Now I will give you a typical example. Between 2014 and 2017, uh, if you look at our data, you will see that 
enrollment of people onto antiretroviral treatment is going up. You know, so at a dramatic are rate. Coming. At a dramatic rate. More people so are coming in for the treatment. I will come to, yes, I will come to that. And so you expect no, that. Because I'm, I'm no, a bit confused no, because no, you said that the people confused. are there, but they are not coming. But yes. now you're saying that the antiretroviral uh, treatment is going up, means that the people are Osofo coming. Osofo said there are three parts to the issue. And I'm, I have what I said earlier actually explains one part of the issue, that we are not seeing all the people. Mm -hmm. Number two is that even those we have seen and place them on treatment, we are seeing attrition among them. Okay. So they are following some of these promises. And what we are saying is that that's fine. We all pray when, when we are sick. But you have to take your medicine. Okay. Um, we are not saying that you don't take herbal medicine. You can take herbal medicine. But also take your antiretroviral drug because okay. up to date, that is the only medicine that, that we know, you know and works. That, and that works. And, exactly. And but you should also remember that, you know, there is drug interaction which can have negative consequences. Which is a different conversation yes. all, altogether. Exactly. But, 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 but you sound, and you are the Ghana AIDS Commission, so you sound to me as though the sort of problem mm -hmm. the sort of problem that we're dealing with is is a helpless situation no. because yes because if you say that people are not coming is there a way that you want to reach out to these people is this even possible yes it is possible what is the plan? that is why we have the 1990 uh, uh fast track strategy now so the 19 the first 90 says that by 2020 90 percent of persons living with hiv should have been diagnosed for them to know their HIV status. And once they know their HIV status, 90% should be placed on antiretroviral treatments on a sustainable basis. And then 90% of them should, of those on antiretroviral treatment, should uh, be virally suppressed. Okay. So okay. that is the strategy we are implementing. Okay. And uh, l l let me take, let me take the, the, the view. I'm. Ms. Mr. Mr. Uh, Baraku, I'd like to take the view of the uh, health NGOs on this particular intervention that the AIDS Commission is uh, talking about. But m m Mr. Uh, Kuganablem, are you there? Okay, we've lost him. So, so Ms. Abenaku, I'm coming to you, and, and Reverend Azuma, I'll come to you as well okay. uh, to find out what you think about this intervention. Because now it appears that the problem is getting clearer uh, to me now, and, 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 and based on what the Ghana East Commission is saying, the problems are actually quite uh, different, you know, they, they've got different phases. Now, this one, he says, the people are there. The 310,000 that we're talking about, some of them are not known, correct? Mm -hmm. Some of them are not known. So we know the problem. And, the, the, and he's saying that there's a 90-90-90 approach. I don't know if you're aware of this approach and how sustainable you think it is, how feasible, efficient you think is it, it is from your perspective. I mean, we're looking at how to solve a problem, so. Yeah, it's the same thing I've just talked about briefly, if you notice my presentation. Everything I talk about is what he is talking about. You said Similarly, that the interventions have been misplaced. Is that why we're not getting the other people, or the all than uh, 310,000 we know live with HIV in Ghana? I'm saying that mm -hmm. if you look at the interventions we put, the effort we put, the financial commitment we put, the political commitment we put from yeah. 2000 to 2010, you will see that we lost track after that. Okay. And, 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 and Mr. Tuajin has been part of this history. And what we are saying is that the civil society has played a critical role in searching for cases, in helping them to create a data, in helping mm -hmm. them to monitor deported rates, in helping them to strengthen the health system now to be able to provide HIV and AIDS services. We have other strategy window of hope and the stigma reduction all over from 2000 till now. Mm -hmm. What is not happening now is the funding. We don't have funding now funding to sustain the gains we have made so you can be promoting hiv aids and services if the person is tested and he's positive and he doesn't get the the, the, the the support at the nearest health facility where he has to struggle to receive 
a, a, a whole therapy. Mm. That's a discouragement. Okay. If we still use the media wrongly and and, and they make uh, uh, make it sound like the the HIV is different from malaria, and you are right. Why is that? When I have malaria, if we are comfortable discussing it, but if I have HIV, I don't want to discuss with people. These are sociological and uh, uh, public health issues that we we work with Ghana AIDS Commission to, to be able to cross over. And we are not funding the issue and we are getting back. That, that yeah. is the issue. The issue is just political commitment and funding. That's all. Nothing else. Funding from government? Yes. Government have policies now. All policies are put in place. Mr. Atuahino will tell you how he worked with civil society to migrate till now that he's the director general. Okay. He knows our I, I, I will come to the... the I will come to the issue of funding, which is also very important, but usually we might lose sight of the uh, of the available opportunities for us to deal with a particular problem without necessarily funding if we just keep talking about funding. But I come to the issue of funding. How do you think the AIDS Commission, for example, or all the stakeholders can get to reach out to all the other people, apart from a a expanding uh, the treatment uh, um, you know the treatment avenues available. How do you think we can get all the 310 on board? There's a clear, there's a clear policy direction for the Ghana AIDS Commission. There's an Act of Parliament that established the Ghana AIDS Commission. Okay. There's an administrative role by the Ghana AIDS Commission. There's a supervisory role by the Ghana AIDS Commission. The Ghana AIDS Commission is part of the Ministry of Health, Ghana Health Service. The Ghana AIDS Commission is part of the Parliamentary Health Select Committee. The Ghana AIDS Commission is part of the Ministry of Finance Budget Allocation Plan. So that is the chain until we see that the, the government is fully committed in funding and investing into HIV and AIDS programming to sustain the gain and be able to minimize the, 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 the risk. We will not get there. There's nothing we can do. All the, the this, uh, Mr. Atua, I will tell you, they are well trained. They have gone through a lot of training and they keep on training people. We have the research. We have the, 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 the initial infrastructure. We, we have the database. We can do the projection. We, 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 we are used as resources in other countries. What we just require is that let's finance our policy. Hmm. Once we finance the policy, civil society role is very clear, and we have helped the government of Ghana to reach where we are. Okay, hold on for me, Mr. Um, May hold on for me, Mr. Benaku. I see Ms. Ms. Uh, Etuahine with a very interesting smile on his face. <laughs> but I'll come to you, sir, later. Let me bring Reverend Azuma in. Yeah. You are a person living, living with, with HIV. HIV. You know people and you deal with them all the time. Yeah. How do you think we can get the rest of the people? Because that as, appears to be part of the problem. Yeah. So people don't know their statuses. People, are, people who know their statuses are out there. They're not on treatment yeah. and probably having, you know, interactions with exactly. people sexual interactions etc yeah. and the disease just gets yeah. uh, it just, the virus just Keep keeps moving. spreading yeah how do you think we can get all of these people into our database and so we can put them on the treatment yeah thank you yeah we can get them in, in stages one let's deal with the health facilities where the people will get the treatment statistics show that there's a lot of stigma mm. at our health facilities i'm a reverend minister and there are many reverend ministers who are also HIV positive. But are they out? They are not out. Because okay. when they go to facility A, and one way or the other, their names are out. Pastor so and so, so is, HIV. is HIV positive. Is he, uh, maybe he, he had a lot of congregation. And to him, that is a big stigma. So he can affect his daily income at the church. He will not go. And therefore, and we know. There are, it's on record that so many people are not coming to the facility because of the stigma there. So what do we do? So we should sensitize our health professionals well. And when they do that, the law should take them on. If okay. they need to be punished, they should be punished. Okay. Because when we don't do that, many people will not come. Because the information is supposed to be confidential, right? Yes. Except for those people like yourself who want to do advocacy. Thank you. Who put yourself out there. Exactly. But it's supposed to be confidential. Confidential. But they are not okay. keeping that confidentiality. Does it mean that over the years, people have done things and gone away? People have disclosed people's HIV status. I mean, health workers have disclosed HIV statuses and 
gone away with it. Oh, yeah, of Nobody. course, of course, of course. Is, is, is there yes. a law? Is there a law yes, to, to my, deal with it? My, my director will tell there's a new act is, now. Is, okay, yeah. please yeah. tell us about that. There is a law. Mm. Um, and, and very soon, when Mr. Etienne finishes, we'll go on social media and, and take some of your comments, and then we'll bounce it off our resource persons. There, there is a law. And, and, um, the Ghana AIDS Commission's Act, Act 938, uh, criminalizes HIV-related stigma. Okay. And therefore, if anybody feels stigmatized and has the evidence, um, the person can, you know, test the law in the law court uh, you know that people no, don't no, like to no. go to the court sir. It, it, yes, it's quite, that, that, it's quite that, a process that, that is the problem uh -huh. but we have so support groups we have various uh, NGOs uh, advocacy NGOs which would want to take up matters of this nature can the Commission because do anything about this stigma because it was also part of the uh, the reports the UNH yes. report that we just saw that yes. it's actually reduced the ability for people to accept mm -hmm. HIV people living with HIV has actually reduced it means that more and more a few more people uh, those who are able to accept people for their statuses are reducing yes so, how, so how can the commission help? we have a stigma reduction strategy that we are implementing um, and that that is quite broad tackling stigma uh, at all fronts okay um, besides that one of the things we are trying to do is also work in partnership with the NGOs and uh, other civil society organizations to to you know reduce stigma but in, in particular reference to the health facilities we, the, the research he referred to was mm. done by Ghana's Commission okay. and the NACP and other partners. The results has been used to train health workers to reduce stigma at the workplace okay. so that PLHIV will receive services in a non-stigmatizing, non-discriminatory environment. Mm. And that has been done uh, on a pilot uh, basis. We are now scaling up. Uh, to other health facilities so that we can cover uh, all the health facilities by training them and supporting them okay. to reduce stigma. Okay. So work is on, ongoing, it's ongoing. In, in that respect. Okay. Well, Mr. Tiarane will have to leave us uh, shortly, but before he goes, let's quickly go through uh, what people are saying on Facebook concerning this. So the question we put there is what should be done, do you think, what should be done to control the spread of HIV? Because it's obvious irrespective of how we explain it it is still the figure is still going up um, freedom Christopher says I think we should encourage marriage in our churches even if okay support them who decides to get married and also advise to quit uh, premarital sex use of condom and other preventive measures to be encouraged Ghanaian mothers should stop acting holy tell your kids at four five six seven and more to abstain from sex they should also teach them to use condom sex is sweet but it comes with a lot of headache. Very interesting uh, point there. We'll see what uh, our panelists think about it. Let me take a few more comments. Uh, Grace says, I think the awareness campaign has reduced of late. Uh, when I was a kid, the campaign was everywhere and very, very scary images attached to it. It should be brought back. That's a point that Reverend Azuma will not necessarily agree with because he believes that let's project the positives. Let's see people who are living with HIV AIDS and still living okay and still looking good just like he's looking here because then that will encourage people to know that you need to test so you know what you're carrying. Mamia Fua says bring back the awareness adverts on TV and radio stations. People are forgetting how dangerous the virus is. That would be a good start. What we see and hear makes more impact than anything else. Abstinence, protection and everything else can be preached to reach a wider audience just like it was done in the early 2000s. Let's go back to the HIV AIDS awareness campaign that reduced the figures drastically some years ago. Mr. Chai, and I'd, I'd like to finish with you, so if you can, uh, so if um, you need to attend to this emergency, you can. But I still have Mr. Benaku on the line and Reverend Azuma here. So, Chai, this, this, this is a concern that a lot of people are raising. They're saying that, and Mr. Benaku said the same thing. Reverend Azuma here has said the same thing, that the advocacy, the level, it's just gone down. Advert, you know, that. The way we pushed it back in the 2000s, we've stopped. Is there a plan? 
Can you promise the people of Ghana watching you that the ACE Commission is putting together a plan that we're going to revisit we, the level of campaign we did? We, we, we have a plan. And the plan is to do exactly what we used to do before 2010. And at that stage, it was a huge social mobilization. Uh, media had its own place in this. Churches, mosques, uh, workplaces, that is, companies, um, everybody, every sector of the country was involved. Mm. And we, a Ghana's Commission plays a fa facilitative role. But now everybody should recognize that we are not out of the woods based on the data that we have discussed this afternoon. And so, the media has to be involved. And what I keep telling my media friends is that all the arts and the songs that we develop at that time, they are still available and in your custody. So please, <laughs> just, just give some air time to play some of these arts. If you need more, in fact, we have developed new ones, which we are putting out, okay. new ones on uh, treatment, antiretroviral treatment, testing, and also uh, uh, retention uh, in care. We have all those, and we will uh, give them out to the media houses okay. uh, to play. So we are going to see that happening. When it comes to funding, which Mr. Benaku is so mm -hmm. uh, worried about, yes, we, government has created an ACE fund because we know that we are not going to depend on donor fund forever. So we have to populate the ACE fund with cash so that it becomes operational. How do and we populate the ACE fund with cash? Everybody can contribute. Donations? Donations. Donations from companies, from individuals. And interesting, interestingly, there are many well-to-do Ghanaians who are affected by HIV. Some know, have lost family members, very close loved ones mm. uh, uh, in this country. Okay. And when you talk to them, they feel it. Okay. They all can contribute to the fund, okay. whilst government also does its part. And so it's, it's, it's a collective responsibility. Okay. And we all have to work together like we did in Back then. before I'll the take, year. I'll take your final word on yeah. this, Mr. 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 Um, uh, Twaini. How do you encourage people, those who are watching us? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about the media, you know, putting it out. Not, you're here. Talk to people out there um, give them reasons why and make it brief for me sir they should even go testing why they should even wear condoms why they should you know abstain if they if they if they have to yes hiv infection in this country is largely through sexual contact and so anything when anybody who engages in sexual activity especially uh, in casual sex or multiple concurrent partnerships or serial monogamy and even intergenerational sex that is sugar mommy sugar daddy kind of business <laughs> you need you need to take responsibility for your life and protect yourself okay. because that is what it all comes down to the individual the individual but as a country we should continue to recognize that HIV is still with us. It is killing people when it's not supposed to kill people okay. because we have treatment. We have treatment. And it happens so because people don't know their HIV status. Okay. I was happy you referred to uh, the results of the DHS. Mm, wrap up for me, sir. And so it is important that we all know our HIV status and happily gifty the host of this program knows her status today. And I know she will go to bed and sleep like a baby. I've always been sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. you need to understand that your fears may be unfounded. Right. So test. Don't be also sure. think that your partner's status is your status. No. We have high level of uh, Discordance. couple discordancy okay. in this country. So just so because your partner has is negative doesn't mean you're negative. Exactly. You need to check for yourself. Exactly. Okay. So know okay. it yourself. All right. And uh, this is the period for testing in the communities, in the health facilities, right. because we are approaching World AIDS Day on December 1st. So from 1st November up to 1st December, and I'm not saying it is ending, 
we have made provision for HIV testing all over the, the country. Okay. So make yourself available so and find, take advantage. Find a place where you can get the test. I did, I did, I did mine this afternoon at the, at the Braca Polyclinic. Find yourself a place and get tested. Uh, Ms. Abanaku, thank you so much for your time and, and, for, and for your patience on the, on the phone. We, we, we're hard pressed with time at the moment. Uh, but thank you so much. Reverend Azuma, I'll take your thank quick you. final word on uh, a message because now you are a living example. Yeah. Give people who don't know what this is all about. People who are thinking they're afraid, you know, they have all skepticism about checking. Why should they give them a message for me? Yeah, thank you, my fellow Ghanaians. Uh, HIV is real. I am living with HIV for 18 years with my wife, uh, but I'm doing well because I am on treatment. And therefore, I know that when you also know your status, that is the first step of prevention. Know your status, accept the results, whether negative or positive. When it's positive, there is a life to live. Until Retrovara is there, do not allow any friend, any pastor, any herbalist to deceive you that come for prayer. You can go for prayer, but still take your medication. My word to churches is that there is now a compulsory testing before marriage mm -hmm. at our churches. It is wrong. Is it, it is wrong. Very wrong. Mm -hmm. And there are some churches who are also doing that the, the, when you are coming for counseling, there's a particular laboratory test you must go and do a test and bring the result to the pastor it's and the wrong. marriage counselor. So your message to the church that is? It is a bad act they are doing. And it's a, it's a discrimination, it's a stigma. They should stop. I'm HIV, I'm a human being, I can marry, I can give birth. So why should you, my HIV, be a basis before you bless my marriage? These are all against the law, and we must stop it. Thank That's you. a very interesting conversation. We can yes. have another time. Yeah. Whether or not it is okay to test for HIV or compulsory test for HIV compulsory. In, church, in churches. Yes. Uh, that's an interesting conversation we can have another time. Yeah. But you can see him. He's been living, you've been living with HIV for, for how long? Years. 18 years. Yes. There four he children is. 18 years, four negative. children who are all negative. 18 years, four children who are all negative. That's because he came out, he did the test, he knew he had HIV, he's been on antiretroviral, he is surviving. You can survive. All you have to do is go take a test. Well, I did mine. I'm negative. This is good. Yes. So do yours. Yes. All right. So thanks so much for joining us in this discussion. This is all about keeping yourself safe keeping yourself safe and far away from HIV AIDS, which we're told is still prevalent. There are people around you, many people, you, you start the statistics, people around you who are or may be having this. Be careful how you live your life, but still stay with me here on The Pulse because I will be right back.